During the summer of 2023, we moved to a remote Scottish Hebridean island to be its only two residents along with our two pet sheep and pair of cats. These remote islands seem to retain an old-fashioned rhythm and a charm which we find encouraging us to live a more frugal and simple life, the way man was perhaps more intended to. We have an ancient stone cottage to restore, veggies to grow, livestock to build up, fish to catch and smoke, a boat to buy, and much more. Step back in time with us at the Scottish Isle. Good morning. Eight o'clock, no, about eight thirty on Monday morning. So we never expected it to settle. They said snow flurries and there's more of it expected today. So the sun still hasn't come up yet over the mountains. So I don't know whether or not this is going to melt. It's very fine. Just caught a fish jumping. I've got quite a lot of filming to do today for Wednesday's episode. I don't know how much this is going to impact on that. colours. The camera never, I'm guessing no matter how expensive the camera is you use, it's never going to do justice to these colours when you're looking at them through the naked eye. But I mean, look at that. Hungry. We can get you some more. Go and get you some more little sheep. It's thinned out a bit in here, doesn't it? Yeah, all this needs doing. All these little part, all this juvenile pine all needs cutting down. We just found this. 
It's like a a power cable for an extension cord, but it's a. Uh, Where does the other end go to? Is it just tied round the tree? This. Oh, why would they? Why would they do that? Yeah, it's tied around there as well and goes into the ground. You see it up there, it just goes around that tree. That's bizarre, isn't it? What is that? Well, maybe, they, maybe it was a zip line at one stage, they were playing with it. No, it's, 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 a power, it's an actual cable of some kind. No, it's not plugged into anything though. I think, the, I think it's for kids. Uh, get Derek on the phone. These little hollies all need to come out as well. But yeah, the pine needs to thin. Why don't you start with that one over there? So there's these two close together. Start with a little one. Well, to be honest, at the minute, I'm looking for sheep food. And they will eat the pine, but they want the cedar. Do you remember what's what are sheep like when they're eating pine? Ow, 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 ow. <laughs> <laughs> it's funny to watch. Uh, there's a load of cedar here, but it's too uh there's you know, there's not enough on it. Look at this. Hitchhiker growing on this absolutely giant pine. Reminds me of the Wheat and the Tears parable. I wonder if it will harm the tree or if they can just uh, coexist together. I'm not sure it's very good for it, but it's the only tree in the forest that has this. Weird. Drag it, yeah. Yeah, we'll pull it round and drag it. I reckon both of us can drag that without having to chop it up, and then the sheep can eat all of the foliage off it, and we'll chop it up and burn it. Win win. Hi ho. It's quite heavy. It is quite cumbersome. So, I don't know. Yeah, if we if we flip it over, it'll be a lot easier, I reckon.
Come around here, you'll see them better. Little pine martin feet. Yeah, you're right. Some sort of... It's a pine martin, isn't it? It has to be. A squirrel? I have seen a red squirrel in here. Yeah, it could be. Yeah, it's probably more... I don't know. It's small for a pine martin. Okay, so we're going to go red squirrel then. Mm. Looks rosenty to me. Tell you, those bloody sheep don't know they're born, do they? <laughs> no. If you'd have said to me, like, what been five, six years ago, one day you'd be living on an island out in the west of Scotland, cutting down trees for your sheep to eat, I'd have gone, <laughs> yeah, all right. The snow's helping immensely. To see their big eyes oh. when, uh, when you pull this over to them. It's a bit tough, that bit. What is it, PPE? Yeah. What PPE do you need to be wearing to drag a tree? I'll have to look up the Health and Safety Executive Manual. If you will do that. Yeah, I will. Because I don't want to be no. putting myself in danger in any way. Can you see them over there? They're looking, they know exactly what's happening. Do you remember when the oak blew down and you dragged the oak from over here? Yes, I'm not windy day. That. And then you pair. Oh. <sighs> you know the problem with putting it here? The deer will eat it. Crowdy, come on, you're missing out. It's nearly all gone. <laughs> Just figuring out which way she wants to come down. Like a true Shetland. I'd rather do some mountaineering than come down the uh, come down the steps. Massive mouthfuls. First day we got Crowdy when she was six months old, we, uh, she escaped from the pen. We had to tame her first. It took a couple of days to tame her properly. So she was locked in a pen in their little stable. But she got out when one of, one of us was trying to go in and she ran and hopped over the quite high stone wall and uh, ran off into a farmer's field with the neighbouring farmer's flock so I had to phone her up and say I'm terribly sorry could we round up all of your hundreds of sheep and pluck ours out of the middle. <laughs> she was very obliging though. 
But yeah, Shetlands are uh, good jumpers as you've all seen. Well, that was a success. Keep them going for, uh, well, until tomorrow. Hi, it will be gone by then. <laughs> How long did this take in the end? Six, seven hours? A good while, yeah. It's surprising because you look at it and you think it's not going to take that long. But there's there's tiny little bits that have, uh, now it's dried, that I've pulled away. So they, they need refilling. There's a lot of uh, nail holes and screw, ho screw holes that we have to... Uh, so we've got the wood filler. That's going to be going on today. So it's just tidying it up a bit. We've also got to just take off any of the excess cork with a, a sharp razor blade, like a Stanley blade, box cutter blade for the Americans, yeah? Mm-hmm. And then that will just take off the excess. Um, we ordered some trowels yesterday, vintage trowels, because the price of a decent trowel was like 50, 60 quid. So in the end, I found six old... 1970s ones for and, 20 quid and therefore they're going to be for the edges right well that's for these yeah the the uh, the mortar is going to the mortar that we've used here is going to be put up here all along the edge of the ceiling and then obviously just smoothed off 
to close the ceiling space, stop the heat from going up there, stop the debris from coming down, and also aesthetically it'll look good. And that won't be painted, that will just stay the same colour as this. The paint for the ceiling should be arriving today, but we've got snow done today. Yeah, we've got like uh, two inches of snow outside. Uh, oh, one more thing, these corners. If we get the opportunity to do... Um, Jeeves. To do these two corner pieces. Oh yes, so we need to get a, a little piece of wood and then... Just, I've got, you know, I can... Well, the problem is, is you know, the only thing that we've got to cut it with is a jig and we can't get any uh, straight edges with the jig. But we'll do, I'll, we'll, I'll see how it goes. There's always the... What's it in the tool shed, isn't there? Yeah, there's a bandsaw up there, isn't there? I don't know how that works though. As in, is the power one up there? I'm about to collect some post. I think we've only got some letters or something. It's nothing exciting, but... Yep. As I said, nothing exciting. But it's good to come out in the, uh, in the snow on the quad. Somebody asked in the comments last time I came up, why didn't I bring the trailer as a, as a matter of a principle? But I was only expecting to get uh, two small parcels. And when I turned up, there was like six. Anyway, let's head back. I'm just heading back to the boat and I saw these dog-like uh, paw prints uh, and when I came down here there was no, this was all virgin snow and there were no human footprints so it's not a dog so it has to be a fox and I didn't think we had any foxes around here. Take your time. There's your post, madam. Thank you, sir. I'll be off then. Yes, safe uh, postmaning. Bye.
More snow. There's a lot of confusion again about the island, where we are. Where things are on it. And where, how, on you the know, mainland. the mainland is, etc. I've, you know, I don't really bother that much at the minute with the comments, so if I'm seeing them, there must be a lot of them. Yeah, there have been a fair few, maybe some newcomers to the channel. Well, that's, I think, what it is, because we've explained in the earlier episodes exactly what the orientation is. Well, we were thinking about, um, in the most recent podcast, with for our patrons, podcast four, we were, you suggested that we would do a rudimentary map to show people. And one of our patrons uh, has kindly made the most awesome map for us. So hopefully that'll be ready for this episode. Mm. Your, uh, your face when you saw it. You were like childlike glee. The um, explanation of... Somebody, uh, that's, that's why uh, somebody said about these three islands, I didn't understand. So there's the mainland... Mm-hmm. There's water, yeah. there's our island, yeah. and then there's this island, that island, that island, there's another one over there, another one another there. One there. Uh, there's there's uh, multiple islands off our island, Yeah. if that makes any sense. And that big one, that tall one, was uh, the one that you were on in the last episode, yeah. looking back at the house. The one that looks like a crannog. That looks like one of those anvil clouds again over there, look. So it gets such a sense of depth on the mountainsides, don't you, when the snow is on them and the sun shining? Well, yeah, this, this one here, the mainland base there, it's just, it looks so much closer. And bigger, because of the dusting of snow. It does look like somebody's just sprinkled ice and sugar on everything, doesn't it? Another curlew. Hey. Such a haunting sound, isn't it? No snow. Yeah, you're right. It snowed there, but not there. <laughs> how weird. I mean, look how heavy it is over there. We just, well, that's... We obviously got the edge of it, didn't we? Because look how heavy it is there, and then it gets lesser and lesser and lesser, and then it's on. Mm. So we we were just on the edge. That jumping fish was awesome. Right in front of me, I was looking right at it when it happened. You said it, it was a lot bigger than the camera. Yeah, it, it was believe. as big as, you know, it was, it, you're not going to be able to see it, are you? But as big as your forearm, yeah. It, it's, it doesn't look nowhere near as big as it actually was on the camera. It, um, that camera fish eyes anyway. If you get to the edges. I'm sure there are some fishermen, anglers out there that will tell us exactly what kind of fish it is. But we get, we get herring, we get sea trout, salmon, mackerel. I know the owner once said that... Um, they caught a, a, a really big mackerel one time. But yeah, I've not looked closely at it yet to see if I can identify what fish it is. Instinct would say mackerel. That's what it looked like to me, but what do I know about fish? Nothing. I'm from Grimsby, I know nothing about fish. I know a lot about haddock and how tasty it is with fish and chips. And that is it. How much was a poke of chips when you were younger? Oh, what of chips? Poke of chips. I mean, a bag, a bag of chips. Sorry, a bag of chips, yes. <laughs> how, how posh you are. 12p. Hello, my good sir. May I have one of your bags of your chips, please? That's, well, we said a bag of chips. And but, you don't say fish suppers, do you? We say no. fish suppers. You say yeah. fish and chips. I'll have fish and chips twice. And you go into a, a Scottish fish and chip shop and they look at you like you've just spoken Swahili to them. Yeah, exactly. I would, like, say, I would like fish and chips twice, please. Uh-huh. Well, uh, oh. your two two fish suppers, please. Well, the fish and chips, twice. Would you like a knife and fork with that, with sir? A, with a carton of peas. <laughs> <laughs>
please. <laughs> Slightly mushy. We don't talk about the pea thing, especially in the people's fish and chip shop. I don't even know if this is still filming. 